So I'll take a quick moment to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Wiedemann. I've been at Splunk for a little over five years now, and I'm a principal IT strategist as well as an ITSI subject matter expert. So to get us started, I'll talk a little bit about the problem that we're trying to solve because ultimately bad KPI thresholds are going to equal bad alerts and we want to avoid that problem. I'm going to show you a best practice approach for how to tune KPI thresholds in your environment and we'll do that in a demo environment through an interactive thresholding session. I'll end the session with a couple of additional resources that you can take a look at to further help you here. So you may be asking yourself, are my thresholds good? Do they need to be tuned? And I've created a brief list of some of the warning signs that you're going to see in the environment that indicate that you have work to do. If your service analyzer is always red, you absolutely need to tune those thresholds. If you have uh, end users complaining of too many alerts or too much alert noise, you need to go tune those thresholds. And if you've simply chosen default threshold configurations or given thresholding very little attention thus far in ITSI, you probably have some work to go do. In other words, if your services, aggregate KPIs or entities are perpetually degraded, you are going to have issues and you need to work on thresholding your KPIs. I'd like to call out a couple of nuances that are important when understanding how service health scores are calculated. If you are using entity level thresholding, then a degraded entity is going to have a major impact on the service health score, and you need to understand that. Additionally, if you have, let's say more than five or six different KPIs in your service, you need to leverage proper KPI weighting to ensure that the service health score is degraded appropriately. All right. So let's get into the demo environment and I'm going to walk you through a best practice approach for identifying and tuning poorly configured KPI thresholds. So we know we want to assess the environment to determine which KPIs are not thresholded appropriately. In order to get started with that, my first recommendation is do not assess the entire environment at once. Chances are you have multiple services, multiple service trees, and maybe even some service trees that are complex like this one is. So what you want to do is you want to focus your assessment down towards one particular service tree that represents a logical system, or maybe even a subset of that service tree first. The service analyzer does a good job of telling us which services are healthy right now but it does not tell us how healthy or unhealthy those services and KPIs have been over an extended period of time. And there really are no dashboards that ship by default with ITSI that help with that. The good news, however, is that the ITSI content pack for monitoring and alerting does contain two dashboards that are purpose-built to help you threshold KPIs understand how they've behaved over a long period of time. And so go out to our docs pages to the uh, ITSI content pack for monitoring and alerting and follow all of the installation steps in order to get access to those dashboards within your environment. Let's head back over to the environment where I've already got the content pack installed. And now if you click on dashboards and dashboards, you will notice two new dashboards present in the environment, ITSI Service and KPI Severity Analytics and ITSI Service and KPI Threshold Analytics. These two dashboards are designed to work together. The Service and KPI Severity Analytics dashboard is going to give you a holistic view of how multiple different services and KPIs are behaving in the environment over time and you use that dashboard to drill down to understand the very specific behavior of a particular KPI or service over a window of time. So let's launch the ITSI service and KPI severity analytics dashboard now. All right, so now that the dashboard has loaded up, let's start to walk through it. You'll recall me saying that we don't wanna to try to assess the entire environment, but instead let's look at a subset of the environment. And the way that you do that in this dashboard is using the service name filter. 
In this case, I'm going to scope my analysis of the service and KPI performance to just the exchange transport layer for now. So let's look at the rest of the filters that we have access to as this dashboard is loading up. The first one is the time picker, which is determining how uh, you know, long of a window of time do we want to look back and assess the performance for. It defaults to the last seven days, and that's a pretty good choice, but obviously you can look at a longer window of time or a shorter window of time or a very specific window of time. We're looking at the behavior uh, and the performance of all of the service health scores, all of the aggregate KPI results, and all of the per entity results. So you may want to choose to include or exclude some of these results conditionally, um, but for now, we'll keep all of them included in our analysis. Now, as you build KPIs, you can set their importance um, as it pertains to how uh, much weight you give it in the service health score computation. And so if you want to just focus your analysis towards KPIs that are more heavily weighted than others, you can certainly do that or you can include all of them. The show healthy services and KPIs is defaulted to no. Um, basically, what we're doing here is we're filtering out from the from the table below the services and KPIs that are pretty healthy, you know, ones that are probably not needing to be your top focus. So if you want to see every single service and KPI built in the environment uh, for this particular filter, then go ahead and set this to yes. If you just want to focus in on those ones that we believe you need to focus your threshold analysis on, uh, then just keep that no. And finally, uh, for performance reasons only, if you want to just run some sampling against the ITSE summary index because you're looking over a really long window of time or you find these searches to run somewhat slow, you can turn on sampling at a couple of different sample ratios. And, um, you know, it's going to give you a good representation uh, of how that, uh, you know, how those services and KPIs have behaved over that window of time. But again, it's not going to be exactly perfect because we are doing some sampling. Turning our attention to the middle of the dashboard, we have several different panels that give us the overall distribution of health within the environment. We can see how many services, aggregate KPIs, and entities are excessively unhealthy. In this case, it's obvious that aggregate KPIs represent the biggest concern in the environment. And then across the bottom here, we're showing you what the distribution of those severities are. So while we do have some KPIs that we have to go look at, we can see that the vast majority of the severity values are high. We do have some that are medium. And the good news is we don't appear to have any that are critical. The rubber really meets the road in this dashboard uh, on the table at the bottom here. In this table, we are surfacing up every single service health score, every single aggregate KPI, and every single entity that is excessively unhealthy. And we're showing you why we flagged it and how unhealthy is it. So let's walk through this top row as an example. This first row is associated with the Transport Queues Microsoft Exchange service. Um, we're showing you the KPI that was flagged. In this case, it's the messages queued for delivery per second. We are also including the KPI importance in here, heads up so that you can see it. So this was set at a five on your uh, importance slider in the service build. And because you see the entity filled out here, what this is telling you is that this result here, this row is associated with a particular entity that is you know, having issues with, uh, with this KPI. Why did we flag it? We flagged it because it spends more than 10% of its time in a high or critical status. And specifically, it's 100% of its time. So unless there's something known to be wrong with this particular entity, there's no reason for it to be you know, high and critical 100% of the time over the last seven days. So chances are this represents a uh, per entity KPI threshold that is not well configured and needs to be fixed. Let's move down a little bit further. Um, again, we have another result here. This is associated with the transport performance service. It is associated with the transport submission queue length KPI. And here we don't have an entity. So what this is telling us is this is an issue with the aggregate KPI uh, result here. 
So this KPI is, is having issues. Again, we flagged it because it is also spending uh, more than 10% of its time in a higher critical status. It is also 100% of the time. So once you identify, and really each one of these is something that we need to go look at, but once you identify a particular uh, result that you want to go and analyze, the next thing to do is to click on this table and we're gonna drive you in to that specific KPI in great detail. So we're carrying forward um, most of the configurations from the, from the previous dashboard, we're carrying forward the date range. So this is the last seven days as it was in the previous, uh, uh, previous dashboard. We're drilling you right into the KPI that we selected. And um, then we're going to give you some real good insights into how this KPI is behaving. Let's get into how this dashboard functions because it is really cool and very helpful in configuring thresholds. The first thing you'll probably notice is we have these two pie charts that are sitting side by side and they look identical. This one here says, um, this is the distribution of uh, severity values for this KPI based on historical threshold configurations. And this one says it's the distribution of KPI severities based on current threshold configurations. So what this allows you to do is you can click this edit threshold configuration hyperlink, be taken right to the uh, threshold configuration build for this KPI, and you can start to make changes and adjustments. And this right side view here is going to dynamically uh, update based on how those thresholds are currently configured. So you can see if you're making positive improvements based on what you're um, observing in this dashboard. Scrolling down a little bit further, we're not just showing you the, you know, the view of the KPI in a pie chart view, we're showing it to you in a line chart view as well. And one of the things I love about this view is this is showing you every single record from the ITSE summary index, every single result from this particular KPI. There's no aggregation here. Uh, there is no averaging or anything like this. So every record can be seen. The color of the line represents the severity value that was computed at the time. And so it's pretty obvious in looking at this line chart here that there's some sort of a regularly occurring event every single day um, that is not well accounted for from a thresholding perspective. We probably need to sit down with the service owners for this service and confirm that this is you know, something like a a nightly uh, you know, system reboot or something like that. And if they come back and they say, oh yeah, that's, that's absolutely expected. We know that the system is supposed to behave that way. Then what this tells us is, is we have to go and make a threshold configuration changes to account for this known deviation at this point in time. So scrolling down a little bit further, <clears throat> our last side-by-side -side comparison view here is using a punch card visualization. And the purpose of this particular punch card visualization is it's trying to show you, is there a particular hour of the day or a particular day of the week where we see an excessive number of, you know, high or critical severity events. And sure enough, every single day um, at about 4 a.m., we see a large number of, you know, high or critical events. And so this, this concentration here is really just a different way of viewing these spikes, okay? And this is designed to help us identify, is there a time policy that we should be creating to account for what we're seeing here from a spike perspective? And sure enough, there probably is. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a time policy um, for the 4 a.m. hour, as long as we expect these spikes to occur, we want to create a time policy for the 4 a.m. hour every single day so that we can purposely uh, threshold this a little bit differently and not experience these critical values. So let's go back to the top of the dashboard. Let's click edit threshold configurations and let's start to improve the thresholding for this particular KPI. The first thing I'm gonna do is enable time policies and start to account for those regular spikes that we're seeing. So it shows here in the graph. So I'll scroll down to uh, time policies and I'm gonna add a time policy to account for that window of time that we saw. And I'm just gonna keep it at normal for now, okay? 
So let's go ahead and hit save. And watch this. Once that's done saving and we return back to our dashboard, I'm gonna refresh this view. And check this out. Now my side-by-sides look a little bit different and my line chart looks a, a little bit different. And ta-da, we are accounting for and not going critical in this window of time. So that is awesome. Now, it's still, you know, a little bit of an issue still. Um, it looks like in the times that I don't have spikes, I'm sitting here and I'm always throwing, you know, medium and high and critical values, right? So there's this thing is almost never normal. So let's go ahead and take this the rest of the way. I'll go back to the threshold configuration. And now what I'm gonna do is inside the default policy, let's go ahead and turn on adaptive thresholding. I'll keep it at a 14 day training window. Let's go ahead and do standard deviation. And I like the values of three, 2.5 and two for medium, high and critical. So I'll go ahead and click apply adaptive thresholds. And you can see here that I have a much better accounting of you know, the thresholds for this window of time. So I'll click save. And now I'll return back to my dashboard and reload it one more time. And take a look at that. Now we can see this is how the KPI has behaved historically based on how it was thresholded at the time. And this is how the KPI is going to behave moving forward based on the configuration changes that I made. So to wrap things up, we've given you two new dashboards that address the two most challenging aspects of managing KPI threshold configurations. The first is understanding which KPIs you need to focus your time and attention on. And the second is giving you a method to interactively change and improve those threshold configurations and get real-time feedback as to whether or not you're making the right improvements. Well, that's it for the demo, and I certainly hope that you found it valuable. I'm going to wrap by giving you a couple of additional resources to help you along the way. First and foremost is the link to the ITSI content pack for monitoring and alerting, which contains the two uh, dashboards that we use in the demo environment today. There's also a couple of additional blog posts that I wrote around thresholding with ITSI that you should check out. And finally, I have the link to our Splunk Expert Services catalog, which you can use to understand different offerings that we have at Splunk to help you with your ITSI implementation. Thanks as usual and uh, happy Splunking.